How does he do that? Oh, well. Anyway, here we are, finally, at Mikey's humble abode. Welcome to my truck. Okay, so first of all, this is a uh, 1997 Toyota Hilux Surf. It's the KZN 185 wide body uh, with the three liter turbo diesel. Um, what else? So I purchased this myself in Japan and brought it back with me to Australia. So this is a Japan model. So it's a third generation Hilux Surf and uh, there are a few of these around but it's a bit or it can be a bit difficult to find information and get parts for them so that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video is to try and reach out to the wider community there and uh, hopefully uh, I can get some advice and uh, maybe even offer some advice but uh, for example it's a uh, may Maybe it's commonly known amongst people who own these, but people who don't own them, it's not so commonly known that the the chassis and everything attached to it, so uh, drive line, suspension, everything, is actually of a as the same as the 90 series Toyota Prado. So the previous models of Surfs were based on the Hilux chassis, but for these ones. They stuck them on the uh, Prado chassis, uh, which made them a little bit wider and I guess a little bit more comfortable for driving around. But, and they also have the independent front suspension, which is, uh, makes road handling better. I'm not sure how much it does for four wheel driving, but uh, it seems a rigid axle is stronger and better but having said that there's probably not yeah independent front suspension is fine tjm bar steel ball bar uh, which is had this again this is a bit of a mission to get hold of because this bar is, uh, well, for starters, there's nothing. If you walk into a shop and say, oh, I need something for my uh, 97 Hilux Surf, it won't come up on their listings. They'll probably say to you, oh, are you sure it's not a 96? And say, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And it's like, oh, we don't have anything listed for it. So to get around that, you walk into a shop and you say, oh, I need, uh, need a ball bar for a 90 series Prado. So that's what this is. This is a ball bar that TJM sell for the 90 series Prado. And because this is a Prado chassis, it bolts straight on. And luckily enough, it, it fits quite nicely with the uh, body. Because obviously this is a surf body. It's quite, oh, yeah, yeah, it's quite a bit different from the uh, Prado. And it lines up nicely with the uh, flares and sits nicely under the under the grill. Still now the winch cradle sits for some reason a little bit high. I, I guess this winch was uh, designed before the uh, nylon cables came out so it's designed to have the roller face on there but the and I guess that gap allows for the bottom roller and, but now with, with the uh, Dyneema rope, I believe it's called, uh, the winch cradle kind of looks like it's sitting a little bit high. Um, I guess at, at some stage I could uh, lower that down. It would just require drilling new holes and just lowering that by about 30 mil. So it sits flush with the bottom, which would just look better, I think. And uh, also if I lowered that, that would give me enough room in the top of the ball bar to actually put the uh, control box. So a bit of mucking around, but it's, it's fine the way it is at the moment. But maybe that's something I can do when I get a bit of spare time. But maybe you can see in there, so it's uh, the King's Dominator winch. 
Uh, for me, I went with this winch because mainly because of the the price and the uh, and what they do um, on their videos. So the price for me pretty much was the difference between having a winch and not having a winch. So if it works, well, it does seem to work. I mean, I've used it a, a couple of times and uh, it works. So if, if uh, and that's all it's meant to do is work. Uh, if it doesn't work or if it has a problem, um, I, I guess I have a bit of confidence in my abilities to be able to fix it or if there's something that's not so good about it, I believe I can make it better. But uh, I've had no problems with it so far. It seems to work well. So underneath you can see I've got standard bash plate um, and it's rusted out in the same place that they all rust out. So anyone with a Prado will know what I'm talking about. It's rusted out in the same place. I've actually ordered a, uh, a Bushkins bash plate to go on there. Uh, hasn't arrived yet. So hopefully we'll get that soon. Coming around the side, uh, these are the standard side steps. Uh, I, I, I keep them there because of my wife and kids use them. Otherwise I'd need like a, a portable step for them to get in and out of the car. Around the back of the vehicle now, so I've got a uh, factory tow bar. This wasn't actually on here when I, I bought it. So uh, it's, very, it's very rare to see someone with a trailer in Japan. So in Japan, I've been told that people don't have them because they're quite expensive and you need an additional license to have a trailer. I didn't really look into it, but most people have uh, little K trucks that they run around in. And uh, when I was there, I had a K truck for my motorbike. So, yeah. and, and also space is a bit of a problem there. Like if you had a trailer, it's like, where, where would you put it? So, but anyway, I managed to commandeer this one uh, off, uh, off of a friend who uh, sold his Prado. I'm not sure if he knows that I commandeered it before we sold it. But uh, anyway, so I've got a tow bar on here now. And uh, as you can see, I've got these little, these are reverse lights. And they make, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. They make all the difference we're reversing at night time. I can actually see where I'm reversing now. So these are just uh, cheap eBay lights. Um, they've survived. They've survived a bit of water so far, and they're still going. So they put out enough light to reverse. And then, as you can see, I've got the uh, spare tire on the back. Uh, the surfs generally come out with two options, on the back or underneath. Uh, I, I did have a cho choice between two vehicles and this one and another one and the other one had the wheel underneath and this one had the uh, wheel on the back. Uh, I decided to go for the wheel on the back uh, because I planned to put uh, another tank underneath. So the main tank in this, I believe, is about 65 litres. So in, in, in Japan, that, that's fine. Like, it'd be impossible to go a distance and not see a servo. But here in Australia, uh, it, is, it is possible. So, and which uh, I do plan to do uh, next year. So... I'm looking at getting the, an extra tank underneath. So if anyone has any, uh, any tips or advice, I'd, I'm definitely uh, keen to hear it. So my, my original idea was to grab the rear tank off of Prado, but they're like 20 years old now, and the time, hassle, and effort to put in an old tank like that, I'm probably better off just going a new one. So, and the... Uh, 
you know, the rear tyre swings out like that on these. So as, as you can see, I've got the pro, pro rack roof racks. Uh, I got these purely so I could put surfboards on the roof. However, <laughs> uh, that's about all I can stick on the roof at the moment. So I am planning to put a, a cage up here. And uh, I've seen some in the States where they're not sitting on the, on the roof rack. They're actually, uh, the feet actually bolt into this rail and then up the front they just have some rubber feet that sit up here. So that, that's what I'm uh, looking at doing. Uh, definitely not getting one from the States, but um, uh, maybe a, a Super Center one and see how we go with that. So inside, um, not too spectacular. Um, probably see this thing sticking up here. That's that's for my phone. That was for a uh, a GPS, but it's getting a getting a bit old and slow now. And the the way that uh, Google Maps is now, it's just use Google Maps. It's much much better. Um, little mic for the hands free. Uh, the Touch screen, Kenwood DVD player. Um, it's a little bit low. Uh, the noise series Prados actually have the stereo up, up here, so that would be better. Uh, the kids always complain that my shift knob is in the way when we're watching um, uh, Peppa Pig or Ninja Turtles or something. But <laughs> the original idea was for them to have their own screens in the back, but that quite, hasn't quite happened yet. And just have a, I can't remember what brand this is, but just a little uh, 80 channel CB radio with a, I think it's a three and a half DBI aerial. That works well enough for the moment. It's, I don't need communication for long distance. It's just uh, between, generally between vehicles and and if anyone else is around in the tracks or in the dunes. And I also also have uh, two of these little walkie-talkies. I think they're like half a watt. But it just makes, like, uh, like when you're doing recoveries, communication between a spotter and a, and a driver, rather than trying to yell and give hand signals, you can just talk. It's much easier. Okay, suspension. So, hopefully, we're getting a good, a good picture there. So, uh, suspension I've changed out to uh, King Springs uh, with the Ultima shock absorbers and giving the car giving the truck a, uh, a two inch lift, hopefully. So it, it rides pretty well, I guess. So that's what we've got. And maybe you can see down the, down the back there, sway bar links. I've just put some extra washers on them because the uh, the caps, just the caps by themselves, keep on uh, popping off. So, I think thicker, thicker rubbers would go better on there. And then where the actual sway bar is, the rubber needs to be tapered a bit. But yeah, if anyone's got any ideas about that, yeah, let let me know. Uh, the the CV shafts I've just replaced in there. Um, two of the boots were leaking grease so rather than muck around with boot kits I just replaced the shafts. 
was a lot quicker and easier. And of course the tyres. Just recently purchased these, the uh, Nitto Trail Grapplers. They're the 265 by 75 by 16 and the 10 ply rating. Uh, I think there are 8 ply rating ones that are around, they're a bit cheaper, but oh, they're 10 plies. 8's better than 10, <laughs> so that's, that's what I've got, and we'll see how we go with them. But uh, just from what I've experience with them they're, they're they're pretty good i mean they're not they're not noisy on the highway they don't wobble they so they balanced up nicely uh they're awesome in the sand and uh in the mud they're a great a great tire and then of course we have the snorkel now this is a safari snorkel uh, I went with the Safari because it's plastic and it's on the outside of the car and it's sitting in the sun a lot. So there are other ones that are a third of the price, but in five, ten years, I'm not sure how they would hold up. Now, Safari ones, I guess I just have a little bit more confidence in that uh, it'll still be here and still be strong in five, ten years' time. And uh, also, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a mission to to find this. Uh, obviously, because on listings here in Australia, there is nothing for a '97 or third generation surf. So this is actually uh, for for a Hilux this one so there's a model of Hilux that has this same groove in it but on the Hilux the groove actually take, follows the follows the guard down but it 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 fit pretty well it fit about as probably as good as you're going to get so one thing I did do is maybe you can see it there I ran black marine sealant around around here because there was a bit of a gap but apart from that it all fits pretty well so this is under the hood so there's not not a whole lot going on here we just have have the isolator switch for the winch and uh, put in the breathers over the back there. The gearbox breather isn't quite connect isn't connected yet because I've just been trying a few different ways of stopping oil from coming out of the breather itself and it seems like I've got that uh, sorted. So apparently having the wrong viscosity oil or having it too full is the reason why but I had the right viscosity and it was to the right quantity but oil was still coming out so yeah if, if anyone wants to know how I sorted that out let me know and uh, I can show you exactly what I did to sort that out but I actually haven't got any of the black pipe to reconnect it up so I'm just waiting on that to arrive and I guess the other noticeable thing is probably the catch can on here. Uh, the catch can doesn't have a, a paper filter in it or anything. It's, it's just almost doing nothing, I guess. But I'm just seeing if uh, any, any oil residue does end up in here because there is oil residue around this, obviously, but not really around the other end. So the pipe went out of here and straight down into the top of the uh, or just before the turbo or, or, or somewhere down here it just goes went straight down so rather than uh, allow gravity for it to it for it to just fall straight out a little bit of an incline so it has to defy gravity and go down inside of here and come back out before it goes into there so we're near the airport if you 
if you haven't figured that out just yet. But also here on the inlet manifold where or the where the inlet pipe goes into the on the inlet manifold, I guess this is, there's a bit of oily residue around there. So I guess that is uh, from not having a catch can or from this system of the uh, breather hose coming out of the rocker cover and straight into the inlet system. And But yeah, that's, that's about it. Not a whole lot going on. Um, the snorkel comes in over there that's that was all left pretty sanded uh it's definitely not a submarine but it's i believe it's better than what it was so previously the stand one comes down here goes into the guard and runs back down here in, uh, above the wheel and that's where the uh air intake was and that was all falling apart it was all sort of brittle and falling apart so rather than replace the original plastic piping, it stuck a snorkel on here. So that was actually probably cheaper too, even though it was an expensive one. Oh, and I guess lastly, just my, if you're wondering what the uh, modification plates are, so that one's because I, personally imported it myself um, and it just I don't know why it got a modification plate but it got a modification plate but the the other modification plate is just for the child seat restraint bolt so the rear cargo area I guess you'd call it so I don't have drawers in here or anything like that um, I'm thinking about getting drawers in here just because it's a I guess it's a it's a good way to good safer way to store things like when you're bouncing along everything isn't bouncing around um, but at, at the moment normally I just have uh, this tub in here so this tub has just got uh, beach towels, uh, hats, like the kids, some of the kids' um, uh, togs, you know, because like, we live by the beach, so if we decide to just duck down the beach, stuff is in the car. Also, I surf, so I keep uh, my towels and uh, normally wetsuits or board shorts and stuff I just keep in here so if I get an hour spare I can just duck down the beach or, or it's all there ready um, I do and also like being in the tubs I can just pull it out and we have the space so we can put kids bikes in here or whatever if we don't need it um, I do normally like I have I have water for like washing washing yourself after being at the beach I do carry a bit of extra water and uh, and rope and and some uh, straps and I normally carry carry a chair with me just in case so if we're watching the kids play sport at school I've got a seat and also shovel some uh, recovery gear compressor and tools so just just carrying the basic tools like it's it's saved saved me a few times it's like just having a few basic tools makes a difference between you being stuck and not being stuck so always carry tools with me Okay, Q and A. Cheers. Ah, uh, I don't, I don't have a beer, and I don't have Coke. Ah, uh, water it is. Okay, so previous, previous truck. So before I had this. 
or before, so I bought this in Japan. Before I went to Japan, I had a 91, what was it, a Toyota Hilux single cab. Um, I'll see if I can stick a picture of it up now. So hopefully you just saw it. Um, I cried when I sold that. Uh, but uh, it was starting to get a bit annoying having the single cab. So in the single cab, I couldn't put the seat all the way back up. So it wasn't very comfortable for me being six foot to drive long distances in it. Even driving from uh, the, the, the Gold Coast, the Gold Coast up to Fraser Island was, was a long haul for me in that, in that truck. So yeah, just because I couldn't put the seat all the way back up, it was all the way back. Uh, if I put the seat all the way back up, the back of the seat was too straight. So I had to have it sort of forward, but then it was a little bit short for my legs. Uh, but that, that was the only thing about it. It was an awesome truck, so it had the rigid front axle. Uh, you really had to try to get it stuck. <laughs> It, it was great, it was great, uh, yeah. So I shed a tear when I sold that, but I sold that to go to Japan, and then I bought that. So um, if, uh, if you ask me whether I would rather have the Hilux or that, definitely this, like this station wagon, station wagon body. Like I can lock up surfboards inside, like I don't have to, if I'm by myself, I don't have to strap surfboards to the roof, I just chuck them in the back, although even my, uh, like I normally ride short boards, um, I don't have to worry, like when we go down the beach with the kids, I can just chuck my boards and their boogie boards in the back, I don't have to worry about strapping them all to the roof, because we live by the beach so we're not travelling far, so it's kind of annoying if you're just going like 10 minutes down the road but you've got to spend 10 minutes strapping everything to the roof. So anyway, I love the station wagon. Uh, I guess the only... The only other vehicle I would consider is an 80 series Land Cruiser. Uh, I, I love them, I reckon they're great. But they're older than this and uh, more expensive than this. So being in Queensland, uh, this is a four cylinder, so I'm paying four cylinder rego. So one of the, I guess one of the good points of having a a four-cylinder in Queensland. It's significantly cheaper. And ah, before the before the Hilux, I had a Suzuki Sierra. And hopefully, I've got a picture of it now. So yeah, that was my that was my Suzuki Sierra. It was an awesome little truck. It had a two-liter Toyota Corolla engine with a five-speed gearbox in it which was putting out way too much power for the transfer case and diffs. So I broke a few transfer cases and diffs and suspension on that thing. Uh, every time I went out on it, something would break. Uh, it, was, it was great for four-wheel driving, but it, it was just so unreliable. Like things would just break too easily. And, and of course the space, it was too small. We put like a tent and two sleeping bags in the back and it was full. So, but because it was so unreliable and because it was always breaking and because I was always fixing it, I learned quite a bit about how to work on a car, which is, uh, which was, which has allowed me to do a lot of things myself, particularly on, like on this uh, maintenance wise, like for example, the CV shafts I was able to do myself, snorkel I did myself, um, general maintenance services I do all myself. Um, I do like to take it to uh, get a mechanic to service it uh, once a year. And just because I'm not a mechanic, uh, they'll see more than what I see and uh, they generally tell me a few things to look at or need replacing that 
because I'm not a qualified mechanic, I would have never thought to have looked. But yeah, so that's it. Uh, I'm happy with that. I guess unless I somehow come into uh, a lot of money and don't really need to worry about money, I'd, uh, I'd possibly get an 80 series and work on it. But I don't know this has a lot of sentimental value because uh, I brought it back from Japan with me. Uh, top top three modifications. If if somebody was to buy one of these, I'm guessing it would be pretty standard. If they because these are still for sale in in Japan, you can still get them. They're a bit rare now. Um, but even for me, ten years ago, it was very difficult to find a manual. Uh, but automatics are a little bit more common. Uh, I believe the automatic gearboxes can be a bit problematic. Uh, but anyway, top three mods is definitely definitely uh, suspension, uh, tyres. Suspension tyres, so these ones were uh, among the lowest of the surfs that came out in production, so uh, giving it a two inch lift sort of brings it up to a, a normal height, I guess, a standard, what a standard height should be. So, and tyres, a third one. What's the third one? Probably, probably the uh, the ball bar, because the uh, standard bumper comes down very low at the front and very low on the sides, so it's in line in line almost with that uh, with that step. So if you can imagine that step and about that height in front of the front wheel, and that's where this bumper sort of comes down. So it's very low, so it will it will hit things and it could possibly get ripped off. Um, I didn't have the bull bar on there in Japan. Um, in, in Japan, uh, it can be a bit difficult to modify cars and like a lot of people do, they seem to get it around it uh, somehow. But uh, for me, I bought this from Toyota and it, I had warranty with Toyota. So I left it all standard. Uh, and but yeah, that front bumper. When I used to drive up into the snow, that front bumper used to fill up, fill up with snow. And then of course it would refreeze and expand, so you'd have this like little bulging bumper out the front of your car. But yeah, okay. Top three mods: suspension, uh, two inches is easy. You're just swapping out the springs and shocks. Tires too easy. These are the standard wheels. For the surf and yeah ball bar so ball bar is for a 90 series prado to-do list oh it's it's getting shorter but every time i sort of cross something off the list i find something else to add on to it so to-do list is probably the, the roof cage, roof cage, uh, long, range tra long range tank, uh, rear drawers, and, uh, and yeah, I mean the sky is the limit. I've, I've still got to get a fire extinguisher. I don't have a fire extinguisher. That's probably a good idea fire extinguisher. Um, I've, I've got a little standard recovery hook at the front and but I'd rather have two hooks on the chassis rails. So you've got two hooks and then you have like maybe the tree trunk protector hooked on both of them going out to whether that's a snatch strap or, or a winch or somebody else's winch or whatever. And then I'd like to do the same on the back, have two, having two points on the chassis rails so rather than having all that weight on one hook, by having another hook, you've instantly halved the load on each hook. So that's something I'd like to do. 
But yeah, I could sit here all day talking about to-do lists. Uh, best, best and worst points of the surf. Um, I can't, I can't really fault it. Um, but I guess the only reason that I'd consider a 80 series is just because it's, it's, it's bigger. Um, on the outside, yes, as well. Like it's bigger, it's higher. Uh, but also, more so for the interior. So there's more interior space. So uh, it, in this one, you've just got a normal center console. In the 80 series, you've got these nice big center consoles. It's got a fridge in it, little fridge in it. Um, so it, it's wider. There's more space in there. It's bigger. So there goes another plane. So my, my kids are, are five and eight, or just about to turn five and eight next month. So they're still small, but once they get bigger, in the back there is, is not really, a, I don't know, enough room, maybe. Maybe not, it might be a bit tight as they get older. Like certainly once they hit their teens, they'll probably be too big to sit in the back there, but then yeah, they probably won't want to go on trips. Hopefully they will. I don't know. We'll see how we go. So I guess, yeah, a bad point is maybe the size. Um, a lot of people say the engine's like three litre turbo diesel. It's underpowered. But for what I'm doing, it, it, it's fine. Absolutely fine. I've never had a problem or found myself needing more power. Um... But uh, good points, or a plus, yeah, it's it's great. The station wagon, I can put my boards in there and lock it up. That's the main thing. Like, I guess I originally wanted a dual cab with the canopy, but the dual cab, you can't even put my short board in the cab or the back and lock it up. Certainly can't put the long board in there and lock it up. And uh, can't sleep in there. So just having that nice big interior space of the station wagon. Uh, being a four-cylinder here in Queensland, rego is cheaper because it's registered as a four-cylinder, not by weight. Um, and then here in Australia, there's no, or not yet, I don't think, there's no diesel tax. So I think in Japan I was paying a, a diesel tax. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great car. The... 185s, the third generations, they're just a, they're an, they're an awesome car and uh, also this is my daily driver so it's not so big that I'm struggling to get around car parks and yeah it's great, I love it, if anyone wants to, uh, we can sit around and chat about them, yeah definitely. Okay, we're, we're out here in the bush, so there are some tracks around. So, I oh know, let's have a little look, see if we can't get bogged. And, uh, well, hopefully not too bogged, because I'm out here by myself. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how we go. See if we can get this winch out. Have a little look around, see how we go. 